Welcome to my SmackDown post show. I'm Denise Salcedo, and it is the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Over stand and deliver Tuesdays, but we also had a big day of releases for a single day. And today's SmackDown, unfortunately, did not hit the mark. So tuning in, if you are here, make sure to go ahead and let me know. Um, leave some comments in the comment section. Go ahead and send in some super chats, whatever it is you guys want to go ahead and do. Go ahead and send them in because this is a very interesting as they come in. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and talk about SmackDown. So this is the best show, okay? Going into this, this was not the greatest show. Unfortunately, you know, episodes of Raw where we're getting the Performance Center and uh, we're getting Performance Center type shows where there isn't really much happening. It feels like they are saving a lot. So unfortunately, it didn't feel like the very best uh, addition. I think I'm having, uh, super saying I'm having technical difficulties. Um, okay. Let me make sure we are having technical difficulties. Let me go ahead and log on to YouTube. Guys are seen at the moment. All right, one second, guys. Let me go ahead and log on to this stream and see what you guys are saying. All right, one second, guys. I'm making sure that our stream is working. If you guys are in the chat, can you let me know um how everything is coming about? Because I cannot see what is going on all right we're starting to get people back in here guys sorry about that i don't know what's going on we're having technical difficulties at the moment so ignore the te technical difficulties all right it seems like we're back on track all right let's go ahead and continue on this show everyone thank you so much uh for the audio listeners thank you for your patience sorry we kind of had a rough start here at the beginning i don't know what was happening but we got it going now all righty so um Someone says they can't hear me and that it's freezing a lot. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue on. When you guys can hear me and everything is good, kind of go ahead and let me know um, what is happening here. All right. So we had a pretty interesting episode of SmackDown today. Unfortunately, nothing was exactly the way that it was. And apparently every bad thing that happened on SmackDown is now going and jumping into my live stream. So uh, sorry to everybody if I am freezing a lot. But OK, everybody here says that they can see me now and that all is good and that all is fine. All right, awesome. I'll just go ahead and chop that portion off of this audio version. All right, guys, so let's get into SmackDown. We have our first super chat of the evening, and this one is from Matt J. Hendricks, who says, have you seen Aleister Black's vignette teaser on Instagram? I have not actually seen it yet, but I know I heard that he was obviously, you know, doing these vignettes, and I'm excited because... Alistair Black is that person that we have not seen or heard anything from in quite some time. So I'm very excited to see what they're going to repackage him as. If they are going to repackage him, what is it going to look like? What is this new version of Alistair Black is going to look like? Now, I should definitely check out the teaser video on Instagram, though. Um, so thank you so much to Matt J. Hendricks for sending in this super chat and getting us back on track here. All right. So. I'm going to go ahead and reiterate what I was saying at the start of this show. So at the top of the stream, unfortunately, SmackDown was not the SmackDown episode that I anticipated following WrestleMania. Because once again, we were coming off of this really hot weekend, so much happening. Then we also had the releases and just so much going on that it was pretty interesting just to see how SmackDown was laid out today. And unfortunately, I did not think that SmackDown SmackDown was a very good show today whatsoever. I actually thought that it missed the mark completely. We have another super chat from Matt J who says, sounds like Black is forming a faction. You know what? As long as, as long as he is actually getting TV time, as long as we're actually seeing him, because he is a talent that I do not understand how the opportunity has been missed with him. I do not understand how they haven't done anything with Aleister Black. But then again, there are so many other talents and you can say the exact same thing about, especially people that were just released like Samoa Joe, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce. I mean, really the list goes on and on. Khaled Adams says, thoughts on WWE releases from yesterday. So 
it was very disappointing or not like it's always sad to see somebody lose their job you don't ever want to see that especially in a pandemic there were some names that i was not completely shocked about when i saw that they were released you know um but there were names that I was surprised about, that I was shocked about, and those included Samoa Joe, who obviously, you know, we could come up here, all of us, every single person that is watching this stream, you can come up with at least five to ten different storylines, different feuds, different matchups that you would want to see with Samoa Joe. Mickey James, Mickey James, it really makes me upset that Mickey James has not been utilized the way I think she should be utilized in the sense that I really think that she should be helping develop younger talent and she can still go. And unfortunately, I do think that part of the reason why she was let go and you can't help but to think this way is because of, you know, ageism, people being ageist and all of that. And I really do think that's why Mickey James wasn't given those proper opportunities, which is very unfortunate. And I do hope that, you know, Samoa Joe, Mickey James, and if anyone is going to be going to AEW, I do hope those names to be Samoa Joe, Mickey James, Payton, uh, Billy, those are the people that I would most likely be seen going to AEW. But I do think that AEW should be Bring in Mickey James because one of the things that I've been saying nonstop is that they need veteran women to help the younger, greener talent. And somebody like Mickey James is definitely somebody that can go ahead and help out with that. And then also, um, you know, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. It, it is very surprising. I recently spoke with Peyton Royce and I felt really bad because we spoke to each other. We spoke um, back in January ahead of the Royal Rumble. And I felt bad because in that interview she talked about how you know billy k during this time in january was having a lot of featured moments on on smackdown she was being featured and peyton royce was basically saying i'm so happy for her and i can't wait for that opportunity to happen to me she said that at first she was terrified when they got broken up but then afterwards she saw it as a opportunity to make something of herself and obviously flash forward to Jan to what april now four months later probably less than four months later, and she is gone from the company along with Billy Kay, which I did not see that coming. And it's even worse, I think so, even for Billy Kay, because Billy Kay was one of those people that I think had so much personality, so much charisma, and Billy Kay was somebody that the fans genuinely liked. The fans genuinely asked to see more of Billy Kay. So that is why, um, to me, she was a big surprise, maybe even more so than Peyton Royce. Um, but again, and unfortunately, the breakup of the Iconics just really, really went um, south fast. And there was a match today on SmackDown that kind of made me a little upset in terms of the people that were released and what we ended up seeing. And I'll talk about that once we actually get to that actual match. But um, those are just some of my brief thoughts heading in, talking about the releases. We don't know. I know that I know that Dave had put on the Observer that he was expecting some more and might be expecting. There was rumors about there being some more for today for the NXT side of things. We didn't see any. So I don't know if maybe they're going to wait it out a couple of days or what is going to happen there. I do not know. So thank you so much to Khaled Adam for sending in. Um, that super chat and getting that question answered. All right. So guys, let's go ahead and kick things off because I want to talk about and we do need to talk about um Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is now the new announcer, new has been added to the broadcast team alongside Michael Cole on SmackDown. And this kind of came out of nowhere. I don't think many of us were expecting Pat McAfee to be announced here today. And we have a super chat from Nick Zonger. Thank you so much to Nick who says, think McAfee did a great job for first night. You either enjoy him or find him annoying thoughts. So I actually agree with Nick. I do think that there are people that are either going to like Pat McAfee and already like him, or there's people that are already going to have, he's already going to have go away heat with. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is with everybody. But I would just, I have several thoughts on Pat McAfee being the announced new announcer here. And I, for one, do not mind it whatsoever. And the reason for that is 
everything that he did on NXT made me a fan of his prior when he first got you know when he first started doing stuff with WWE I wasn't the biggest fan of Pat McAfee I didn't really get it I didn't really care but truthfully truth be told all of his promos and you know the work that he did on NXT really did sell me more of a fan as a fan of his so I kind of changed my opinion on Pat McAfee and today on Smackdown I think he did a pretty decent job there was nothing that that he did that I found insulting whatsoever. There was nothing that he did where I thought, oh my God, that was so dumb. He did none of that today. None of that. I actually thought that he had a way more impressive uh, commentary debut in WWE than Adnan did, who just, you know, did so on Raw. And um, I actually thought that Pat McAfee brought a lot of energy to the product today. You can tell that he knew what he was talking about. He brought forward a lot of new verbiage, which I really enjoyed. Now, the only thing is that I hope that we do get to see him. Uh, you know, moving forward, I want to see Pat McAfee talk about SmackDown the way that he would talk about sports. I don't necessarily want him to be a character unless they're going to do an angle with him. I don't see a reason for them to have him portrayed more as like a heel character. So I hope hope we don't get that we got a little glimpses of that here today so I hope we don't do that I do want to see him more in an analyst role obviously that is the way that he, they promoted him coming in when I read the press release they were like new analyst for Smackdown and all of that so um I enjoyed him today again he's a great talker has great energy and there was like even some portions on the show where he was standing up and he was very excited to be there and that for me like I like that I like the fact that he's excited to be there because obviously it's two different moods if you go in there and you're so focused that you're not excited it kind of will you know show in your work so the fact that he's excited and that he's genuinely a fan I think reads um reads well to the people that are listening so personally um as of today I really don't have anything uh negative to say whatsoever about Pat McAfee I thought today was a pretty good start to this so what did you guys think of the uh announcement of Pat McAfee as on commentary today on SmackDown. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Uh, Redmond Survivor wants to know what's Pat, why Pat was standing up. Well, I don't watch his podcast, but I was told on Twitter that apparently he has done so in the past or is known for doing that. I can't really confirm yay or nay because really all that I know of Pat McAfee is what I've seen in WWE so that is how I feel about that um let's see what else we have here we have Colette Adam who says that no that he actually misses Corey Graves and he's not the only one I saw a lot of people um not a lot, but I saw a couple on Twitter that were basically saying that they uh, that they miss Corey Graves. But I feel like it's those situations when you're so used to somebody talking and you're so used to somebody's voice that you kind of like you get used to that, you know, like it's always going to be a change. Um, Here we go. So we have another. Uh, oh. Yep. Super chat from Ashley Cartwright. Thank you so much to Ashley for sending this in. Uh, she says, Denise, I love you. I know this is your job. However, I'm only here so that I can say this. Um, all WWE fans are morally bankrupt and are part of the problem. There is no justification for still watching. Well, okay, see, first of all, Ashley, I appreciate you sending in the super chat. And again, um, on this show, I welcome a variety of opinions, whether or not you are in line with my opinions or not. Um, that is perfectly fine. However, I just feel like, look, there is still... At the end of the day, I know a lot of people have a lot of issues with WWE and all of that. But at the end of the day, there is still a lot of great talent on the roster. I know that, you know, we come on here and I'm going to critique SmackDown very harshly today because there was a lot that I did not like on the show. However, just because there are certain weeks that I do not like um that I don't always like everything that is shown on the product doesn't mean that there aren't things that I like on the product. There is a lot that WWE does that I love, that I like, that I'm a fan of. Now, when it comes to being, you know, morally bankrupt and all of that, there are some things that, yes, I completely agree with in terms of, you know, people being released when you still have other people like Velveteen Dream on the roster. And again, I'm not for anybody losing their job, but when you have you know, people like that and you're letting go of other people that don't have that history. You can't like I can't defend that whatsoever. You know, I really, really can't. But at the end of the day, like it's still there's still an entertainment company. 
uh they're still i don't think that the i don't think that the i think i don't think that all the talent should be punished because you know a couple of bad apples so they are going to have that fan support because there are good people on there and there's a lot of great people doing good work in wwe so um really like i don't think like if you choose to not watch the product because you know whether you feel like they're not in line with your morals or whether you just feel like it's not creative enough for you or whatever it is like everybody is allowed to you know make up their own decision on that so ashley i appreciate your super chat thank you so much for sending this in all right so we got lots of comments here um let's see what else we have here um all right, so we're getting definitely a lot of comments on this, but we have another super chat from Sexy Pheasant. Thank you so much to Sexy Pheasant who says, imagine Chelsea Green challenging Bianca. Chelsea Green is another one where you're just like, I feel bad for Chelsea because I don't feel bad for her be uh, in the sense that I don't think that she's going to, you know, do anything. I think she is. I think she's going to be a big star and I'm really, really rooting for her. But I do feel bad for her in the sense that this has really been a roller coaster her time in WWE has been um, very, very uh, unlike anybody else. I don't think, you know, unfortunately, due to injuries and all of that, she never really had the opportunity to really, really show everybody what she can do on that stage. And so I do hope that, you know, once wherever direction she decides to go in, which most likely will be Impact Wrestling, and she has been there before, um, I think that she will continue to do great work. But yes, I do think that Chelsea Green, unfortunately, we missed out, man. We missed out on getting to see what she could really do and what she can do, uh, you know, fully on on wwe with wwe so yeah sexy pheasant thank you so much for sending in the uh for sending in this comment um all right here let's see what else we have here uh this is actually a good comment this one's from jake larson who says if you stopped watching every movie sports team or tv show with morally lacking people involved you would have nothing left to watch this is very unfortunately very very true um there's a in all realms of the world, entertainment, dang, the liquor down the street, it doesn't matter. And every single portion of this world, there are things and pe people that are doing questionable things and that we may not be agreeing with. And it does suck. It really does suck. But yeah, I think I agree with Jake Larson in this where you would literally be left with nothing. So I don't know, man, it's really hard. It's a tough line to uh, to really talk about here. And um, all righty, guys. So let's go ahead and continue on with SmackDown. Like I said, so much to talk about in terms of this was not a good show, guys. This did not feel like a SmackDown after WrestleMania. In fact, it felt like a continuation of WrestleMania. WrestleMania, to me, should really be um, the place where you end the feuds, the place where you, you know, end everything and you start brand new afterwards you keep things fresh you keep things exciting you reboot storylines you reboot people whatever right instead we got a continuation of everything that we were sort of already saw or have been seen you know whether it be at wrestlemania or like the last month on tv so i was kind of very very um disinterested in tonight's episode tonight's episode to me was a little dull there were a couple of moments here and there that i thought were really nice and i will talk about those but for the most part i thought that they could i thought that this was a uh and i hate to use this word but this was a lazy show unfortunately this really was there was nothing new um even the one thing that i thought was going to be new which was the cesaro roman situation ended up not being new at the end of the show we have another super chat from ashley cartwright who says is everyone intellectually troubled question mark come on the only way they will change is if the audience grows up again ashley i really do think that i have to agree with what jake larson said in the terms of there is you know bad apples everywhere there really really is bad apples everywhere and we like even people just like going out and speaking out on social media because there has been people speaking out about these things and about who was let go and who wasn't let go uh but there's only so much i think only so much that people can really do but again if you don't feel like the product is for you and you don't feel like you can stand in line with that 
I would probably just suggest is just stop washing, watching, not washing, keep washing your clothes and all of that. But you can stop uh, watching essentially. But Ashley, I do appreciate the concern and I do appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Christian Ramos says, tonight was two out of five show. I was hyped and it was lackluster. Yeah, I went into this thinking that it would be a pretty decent show. You know, I was excited to see what, um, you know, re in regards to Roman Reigns. I was excited in regards to Bianca Belair. All of that. Those were things that got me hyped to tune into the show. But Overall, it just wasn't the greatest. Uh, Aaron says, it could have been worse. Look at Raw. That's how I feel about the product this week. Thank God for NXT and AEW. Yeah, when I came on here and I was talking about NXT and AEW, I came on here and I was like, woo, let's talk. Let's get started. I was so excited. And then I'm coming on here and talk about SmackDown and I'm just like, Oh, womp, womp, womp. Um, all right, guys, we do have to bring this up as well. This one's from Khaled Adam, who says, how many times did they show uh, the, the Cesaro Rollins clips from WrestleMania? I think, if I'm not mistaken, we got it between four to five different times. So, guys, I'm over the UFO clip. I'm over it. We've seen it, done it, saw it, liked it. Ended up just, no, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, God. Uh, we have a comment from Casey who says, Roman is worth watching, but like you said, where are the new feuds after WrestleMania? There isn't any. There's probably one, and that was the tease that we got today What of Bailey Bianca. That's practically it, but that was such a quick thing. If you walked out of the room and you missed Bailey's promo, you would have missed it. You probably didn't even know that happened. Um, so yeah, there was really nothing new. And I know we are getting WrestleMania backlash. So I guess we are keeping it literal here with WrestleMania backlash. Will it be, will, really will be WrestleMania backlash. Um, Ashley Cartwright sends in another super chat and says, I retracted to not derail your show. I respect your journalistic integrity, but that doesn't give everyone else a free pass to wrongs and all of that piece. Uh, thank you so much to Ashley again for sending in the super chats. And uh, again, like this is the thing about my show. Like you don't have to agree with everything that I say. Um, I welcome difference of opinions on this show. I really, really do. And I read them all the time. So I do appreciate your concern, Ashley. And thank you for sending in this super chat. All right, guys, let's go ahead and um, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, move on. And yes, you guys should be worried about a grumpy Denise Salcedo today because um, there were some things that I did not love. But let's kick things off. All right. Opening segment of the night was Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, and Paul, Paul Heyman essentially coming out and addressing the events from WrestleMania, which, by the way, I have come to find that I loved the triple threat match between Roman Edge and Daniel Bryan a whole lot more than other people. I think that I really loved the match in comparison to other people that didn't love it as much, but I really, really did. But... Obviously, you know, they have the heavy piped in chants from the crowd, the heavy you suck chants piped in. But you know what? It was fine. Roman says that, you know, basically comes out, says they put a lot of eyes on SmackDown, says that he wants um, that nobody wants to face him because they're all embarrassed and nobody wants to have the same thing happen that happened to them, happened to what happened to Edge and Daniel Bryan. So Roman Reigns says that people um don't want to face him. But then Cesaro comes out and stares down Roman. And I'm thinking, all right, this is good. Cesaro is coming off of this win from WrestleMania. He had one of the best uh, WrestleMania matches, one of the best WrestleMania moments. And I'm thinking this is fantastic. Uh, but Roman Reigns, they have this quick stare down. And then Roman Reigns just walks away and sort of really disrespects Cesaro by not giving him the time of day. Um, I liked this for Cesaro. I thought this was great, and I thought, okay, good. We're starting off with, a, you know, a brand new shoe on. <laughs> We're going a different direction. However, uh, it didn't stay that way for the entire show. Um, he does go to Sonia and to Adam Pierce and ask for a match against Roman Reigns, but obviously that does not happen we do end up getting this in the main event we get cesaro versus jay uso instead so 
in regards to what happened in this opening segment, I thought that this was great for Roman Reigns. And one of the things that I tweeted out, and I had to tweet this out because it was fresh in my mind, the fact that Samoa Joe was released. Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe was released. Can you imagine how great it would have been for Roman Reigns to come out and basically say that nobody wanted to face him, everybody's scared, nobody wants to be humiliated, and then to have some Samoa Joe's music hits and have Samoa Joe coming out, a guy that literally looks like he can kill anybody, coming out and basically confronting uh, Roman Reigns, bam, there's your next challenger. But no, that did not happen because Samoa Joe is gone and I am fantasy booking. Um, instead, we get Cesaro and I'm thinking, okay, this is still good, but unfortunately, it didn't keep the momentum the entire night because um, we'll, we'll get to the reason as to, you know what, I might as well get to it now. So it didn't keep the momentum because they kept playing that clip of Cesaro doing the UFO on Seth Rollins over and over and over again to the point that it was being shoved down our throats. And we obviously, nobody's a fan of having to see the same thing over and over. Cesaro versus Jey Uso is the main event in this. And again, to me, I thought, all right, fine. If they're going to go about this and make him wrestle Jey Uso first to get to Roman Reigns eventually, I'm cool with that. All right. I'm cool with it. Jey Uso has been doing phenomenal work. He's been main eventing quite a lot of SmackDowns and having really good matches. So I don't mind this whatsoever. I like the match that he had with Jey Uso. I liked all the, um, I liked the uppercuts, the, the uppercuts that we saw. I liked the clotheslines that we saw, the slaps that we saw from Cesaro. I liked all all of that. However, just when I thought that we were done with the Seth Rollins Cesaro feud, instead, uh, Seth Rollins ends up coming out to attack Cesaro. And this really did not feel like they were going in a new direction like I thought they were. But instead, we're rehashing and continuing Seth Rollins and Cesaro, which is the problem and was the major problem that we saw throughout the entire show here tonight. So unfortunately, that was not... Um, that was kind of the theme of tonight, guys. It really was the theme, seeing a lot of the same things over and over again. And um, let's see what else we are saying. Everybody here is basically talking about the fact that they would have liked to see that Samoa Joe thing. And we have a super chat. Thank you so much to Christian Ramos. Thank you so much, Christian. He says, SmackDown after Mania, and we didn't even get a call-up, not Io Shirai, Roderick Strong. I was perplexed. and could at least toss one new feud tonight. Um, we are doing more tossing in a salad, Christian, because there was nothing new tonight, okay? Like, you could have missed tonight's show, and I hate to say this, but you could have missed tonight's show and not really missed anything. You could have been caught up by next week. And even though um, this was one of the WrestleMania you know, Raws and SmackDowns where we didn't really get any call-ups whatsoever, none of that. So, um, yeah, like... I know, okay, so Roderick Strong, I'm thinking that it's going to be more of a swerve and he's going to stay in NXT and it's going to fall in line more with the storyline. Io Shirai, I didn't really want to see her called up right now because of the track record. We haven't really seen, you know, people really get a proper opportunity on Raw or SmackDown. We've been through that conversation. We've talked about that numerous times. So it's kind of just like, Wait, we're waiting. I feel like a lot of today's episode felt like we were waiting for something, like they were saving things, like they were extending things out until we get to the good stuff. So it feels like we're going to be doing a lot of waiting as of this moment. We have another super chat from Ashley Cartwright says, uh, Denise, can you please follow up with Andrew Yang and ask him why he hasn't followed through with any of the promises he made? Um, I would love to, if I had the opportunity to interview Andrew Yang, I would love to. I know that he did an interview with Chris Van and Vliet. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, I would definitely check it out. It's like a quick like 20 something minute interview that he did with him. I listened to it. It was pretty good. Um, but in terms of like the politics ends of this, um, I really do not know what the next step is going to be in terms of whether or not Andrew Yang is actually going to follow through with a lot of what he said. Um, so thank you so much to both Ashley and Christian for sending in these super chats. Um, Anton HHH says, I never want to hear or see UFO again. 
this like it didn't like it didn't do anything for Cesaro like having that shoved down our um throats like it didn't it didn't do anything for Cesaro like that cool moment that we all liked and we all popped for and we all got excited was sort of just kind of like it kind of killed it for us you know it's like when you say a joke and then you explain the joke you kill it you kill it and that's what happened it's really, really what happened. Um, let's see, we have a lot of comments tonight. We have one from Jay Berdan who says, I say enough call-ups. NXT is a mature brand of its own, equal in its own right. They need a fourth brand, a true developmental brand. They do the call-ups from. Dude, like as much as a lot of people want to see NXT on par with Raw and SmackDown, it's not. It's not presented that way whatsoever. Um, and that's not to say like, oh, we don't see great stuff on NXT because we see the best stuff on NXT. But I don't necessarily think that it is the way that it's portrayed to be on par with Raw and SmackDown. But the way that they have been, you know, with this with NXT on Tuesdays, it does look now like they're going back to more of presenting the show more like a developmental show. So we are seeing a new direction in NXT on Tuesdays. So at least we're seeing that we're seeing that change on NXT, which makes me really happy because NXT was a pretty dang entertaining show this past Tuesday. BTW might as well while you guys are all here. I now have three shows on F4W for you, those of you guys who do not know. This is my third show of the week where I recap SmackDown, but I kick off the week here on Tuesdays right after NXT. I'm chatting about NXT. Following that, I come on here and I talk about AEW Dynamite on Wednesday immediately following the show. And then once again, I'm back Friday to talk about SmackDown. So overall, um, we've been having pretty good shows and I just hope to continue growing this growing these shows helping grow f4w helping grow alongside f4w so i'm just like really really excited and i'm also working on a bunch of new stuff that i can't wait um, to talk about but in the meantime shout out to seth Iser who just became a youtube member btw if you want to become a youtube member here on f4w online you guys can you do get bonus exclusive video clips but if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the channel because there is a lot of cool stuff on here. All right. Um, Redmond says we don't need any more brands. No, we do not. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the three brands guys. I can't, I can't afford another one at this point. There's still a lot that I don't even get to watch anymore because I have to make decisions on what I watch now. Um, all right, here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. So after this, we had a match between Otis and Rey Mysterio. So, um, there's really not much to say here other than um the first portion of this match was really dominated by Otis and um you know he tosses Ray over his head Ray's bumping left and right they're really trying to make you know Otis look like a powerhouse which I do not mind that whatsoever we saw a turning point in this match when Otis goes for a splash but Ray Mysterio moves um Ray Mysterio moves out of the way and he ends up getting the 619 on Otis which Pat McAfee marks out for which I personally thought was kind of funny that he marked out for calling the 619 for the first time in his life um, Rey Mysterio ends up rolling Otis up for the pin. And even though, even though I did not like the match itself, I thought the match was kind of boring. Um, the finish though, I did like, because in that way, and how he got Otis, because Otis is legitimately, obviously, a big guy. Uh, it's not easy for a guy of that size to get out of that. So, um, Lame match, but okay. But I like the finish. It was perfectly fine. Rey Mysterio won, and I was happy about that because I kind of hate seeing Rey Mysterio lose all the time on SmackDown because I'm like, dude, it's Rey freaking Mysterio. He shouldn't be losing all the time. But that's my opinion on that here. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, all right, I'm just going through your comments. BTW, guys, if there's anything you guys want to go ahead and send in, uh, any thoughts, comments, questions, uh, feel free to send them in in uh, the chat. But if you want them to be read for sure and you're like, I need Denise to see this, send it in in a super chat. Um, those always help out, help me out very much. All right, Sami Zayn comes out and he's pissed off. He says that the news headlines, they're lying about, you know, everything that happened, that why don't they say the truth? The truth being that he got screwed. He basically says that 
Logan Paul, WWE, Michael Cole, and everybody poisoned Logan Paul's head, uh, poisoned his mind, and that that is really the reason why he lost. He talks about being distracted by the fans, saying that he worried too much about Logan Paul being outside, uh, being on the outside of the ring looking on, says that all of those distractions are the reason why that he lost this match at WrestleMania. He then calls out Kevin Owens and demands a, demands a rematch. We go into Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, and at this point I'm thinking, I am not interested okay i love Sami Zayn. i love kevin owens i i was so excited for this match at wrestlemania i'm the biggest fan of both of these guys but i did not want to see this match again because i just saw it and i get it i get all the reasons why we got it but for me it just kind of felt very very lazy very very easy to just put this match together and this always happens every time we have a baby face winning at wrestlemania bam we gotta get the rematch whether it be on raw or smackdown so i did not care especially the fact that it ended in a count out so it's kind of like if you're gonna end it in a count out why are you even gonna do the match that we just saw in the first place uh kevin owens brings Sami Zayn back into the ring after he's counted out and gives him a stunner okay thumbs up cool but again we did not need to see this match again and let's see what else we have here guys um mike says mike hawkert says there is not enough creativity in wwe right now to have three brands no no and that's one of the things that we saw that was lacking here today and that was the major issue with smackdown is that there was no creativity nothing new and it really oh i don't like that because i like to come on here and i like to tell you guys oh i love this i love that but I didn't feel that way today, guys. I really, really did not. Brandon says they need to keep Kevin versus Sammy as a special match to do so every often. Exactly. Because I know there was people that were a little upset when this match was named for WrestleMania because they're like, oh, we've already seen it. But I was excited for this match. I really, really was. I enjoyed the actual WrestleMania match. I liked the story. I liked the incorporation of Logan Paul. Again, I liked all of that which is why I wanted it to end at WrestleMania and move on with something else. Um, let's see what else we got here. This comment is from Aaron who says, Sammy is doing some great work with his role. I would rather they have a legitimate reason to have another match and save it for the next pay-per-view. Exactly. If you're going to do it, at least save it a bit. You don't got to do it the following four days later here for um, four days or five days, however many days it's been since WrestleMania. Um, all right, guys, we have a quick promo from Apollo Crews. He's talking about being new intercontinental champion, introduces uh his new right hand man, Commander Aziz. Uh basically says if anybody dares come for his title, they will be annihilated. All right, cool. Now we move on to this next portion of um SmackDown, and this is probably my favorite. This is my favorite thing that occurred on the show. Like, if I'm gonna, if I, I'm gonna say I loved anything, this is it. And why I love this is because, well, first of all, it was the Bianca Belair championship celebration. She just won the SmackDown Women's title in a very, very memorable uh, moment at WrestleMania main event uh the first two black women to main event at wrestlemania uh they had a fantastic match and now she's coming on here she's celebrating she's one of the few few babyface champions she comes out montez ford the street profits uh they both introduce her but montez ford obviously does the, like the official grand introduction of this and this was very very nice a very very uh sweet way because obviously you know they're married so it's really nice to have him introduce her because you can just tell how proud he is of her so that was a really nice touch but um she comes out and she basically says that, you know, she has been floating ever since she won this title on Saturday night, um, but says that even through all of her struggles and everything that she's been through, she never stopped believing that she would be there, um, even with all of the setbacks and all of that. She then goes on to, you know, basically tell the viewers that, you know, she did it for them. She did it for the little girls at home that saw something that saw themselves in her, that she did it for these people. She then starts telling everybody, you have an ES 
NXT inside of you. And I mean, Bianca Belair is really just making you feel like if you want to accomplish something, you can. And um, all I got to say is this was a great babyface promo. She comes across as so likable. It's very, very hard to dislike Bianca Belair. She, um, she's a star, guys. She has the package, everything. I mean... I'm not saying anything new or anything that anybody else hasn't already said about Bianca. So she really has the it factor. I love this moment. Now, the only thing that I would have done differently, though, is this. So she has her moment. Yay. Congratulations. Lovely. All of that. But afterwards, you have, I think it was in an interview with Kayla. Bailey basically says that she is going to go after Bianca's belt. I would have actually liked it if Bailey would have came out after that little celebration while she's while Bianca's hugging uh, the street profits. Have Bailey come out. Have Bailey come out and basically, you know. I don't know, cut a promo on her. Tell her she wants to go after the title. Keep it very simple. It doesn't matter. But just have that actually happen, you know, not have to do it backstage in a promo. I thought it would have been much more impactful had she actually came out and done it instead of doing it in a backstage um, interview. So that's basically how I feel about that. Um... But again, this really was my favorite uh, portion of the show. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. This one is from Pomi Wrestling, who says, Bianca Belair seems to be the only one who will not be in any kind of rematch at WrestleMania Backlash, making Belair versus Bailey my most interesting feud going in the show. What, what else is there, Pomi? Like, literally, what else? Like, we all thought that we were going to be getting, uh, we all thought that we were going to be getting uh Cesaro and Roman Reigns and we may still be getting that but it kind of feels like they're going to be doing Cesaro and Seth Rollins once again uh but really um Bailey and Bianca is something new and something that we can get behind of and again one of the very few new things that we saw on the show Kyle Rochelle says Bianca the best thought that Sasha was going to come from behind. Can't wait to see the match again on Backlash. <laughs> now, I really hope that they do it with uh, Bailey. I really, really, really do hope so. God. Um, all right. Let's see what else we have here. And uh, let's see. We got a comment from Jake who says, I never thought Bailey would be able to be this good of a heel, judging by her original character, but she really improved during the pandemic era. Dude, Bailey, she literally went from, do you guys remember that? God, that candlestick match that she had with Alexa Bliss? Like, oof. Man, that was terrible. I just remember thinking that was one of the worst things I had seen. And then after that, I mean, she completely, completely changed. Completely. Um, Yeah, she definitely, definitely changed. And I'm very happy for her. And let's see what else we have here. Any other moments at this, any other thoughts at this moment? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the following segment, which was Street Profits versus Ziggler and Rude for the tag team titles. Um, truthfully, this was a good match. I really liked it. Uh, my favorite thing about this really is the fact that I honestly wasn't expecting to like this match as much because I have come on here and I've said that uh, that I think that Ziggler and Rude are very, very boring in my opinion. Sorry, uh, but I get very bored with them. So them having this, this match with the Street Profits, though, was really, really good. Like, I really enjoyed this match. There was enough um, fast-paced action. I love that. Um, I love the fact that they're actually making Ziggler and Rude look like a dominant tag team. Because to be honest, besides their wins, there's nothing really that's getting me interested in them. But the fact that they keep having them win, I appreciate that. I really, really appreciate that. Um, so it's making me like them each week even more. And that's saying a lot because, again, I find them very boring. Um, but... Overall, this was perfectly fine. I also laugh at the fact that Michael Cole still can't remember that they're called the Dirty Dogs. I think he called them the Top Dogs or something like that. No offense, but that makes me laugh really hard. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, we have a comment from BM who says, Do you think Bailey Banks 
are gonna number one contender feud are gonna have a number one contender feud. Worried about them being put on hiatus again because there's not enough faces. Um, I think right now it's Bailey's. Bailey should be she would be the person that would feel fresh to have this match with Bianca. Um, Sasha, I think they need to give her a moment, give her a little breather, uh, give her a second, think about what they want to do next with her. Uh, but I think that right now it should definitely be um, with Bailey. They should definitely do something with Bailey and Bianca. And uh, Tom Zed wants to know who will face and dethrone Bianca Belair to win the SmackDown apart from Sasha Banks and Bailey. I just hope that they keep. I just hope that they have women that they. I hope they built up women to be credible challengers, challengers for Bianca Belair. I really, really hope so because I don't want to see the same matches over and over again. And I want to see Bianca have a dominant title reign. So I really hope that is what we get out of this, um, this division. Brandon says they owe Bailey after what they put her through at mania. Oh man, you know what? Bailey did the best she could with that Bella twin segment. They were put in an icky spot. You know, everybody was obviously expecting Becky Lynch. So it was just a, a unfortunate moment really for them there. But all right, let's go ahead and move on, guys. So after this, all right, so we had Natalia versus Shayna. Natalia won. There's nothing much to say about this match, uh, but Tamina gives a boot to Nia Jax after the match. And this is what kind of made me upset. When I think about the people that were released, we're talking about Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, uh, Chelsea Green, Mickey James, in terms of the women that were released, I think of those four women. That were released. And again, I don't want anybody to lose their jobs, but it just it's really weird to me that instead of seeing those girls in action, we're getting more so Nia Jax and Tamina. And I'm just not that invested in it whatsoever. Like I my interest couldn't be lower in this. So that's when I come to think to myself, like, why? Like, why? And like I saw the report that Fightful put out about uh, Kevin Dunn essentially not seen or not getting it with Billy Kay. And it's just like, what on earth? Like, it's so crazy how like a big amount of people, a large amount of people, a large group of people can see something in somebody. And we're the ones that are investing in the product. We're the ones that we they want our eyeballs. But yet, they don't get it with her, but instead we got to see this Tamina, Nia Jax feud, commence, blossom, whatever you want to call it. So I'm sorry, but I just do not get it. I do not get it. I do not get why we had to get rid of the Iconics, Chelsea Green, Mickey James. Mickey James is literally the reason why she's one of my, I'm going to go and say if I think about this, top three top five favorite female wrestlers of all time and she can still go you know it's oh man i don't know that's all i have to say that's really all i have to say um let's see we have a comment from Alyssa. she says can't get into seth rollins anymore new directions character come off sore loser need directions don't like heel turn um yeah we kind of talked about this already pretty much we did discuss this no new directions we're still going to be seeing Seth Rollins and Cesaro. And um, let's see what else we have here. Oh, we have a super chat. Thank you so much to Brandon who says, WWE may need to do a draft or shake up or something so we can stop getting matches on repeat. And then and they should probably stop releasing useful talent. Well, here's the thing, though, is that they're probably if they do do the shake up right after the shake up, we're going to see the same matches from whoever is on whatever roster, whatever brand, um, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same thing. So I don't even have any hope for that. And they have the talent, though. They have the talent that they could use to not have this be, you know, a rinsing machine, you know, rinse and repeat. No, they have the talent that they can use. Uh, so thank you so much to Brandon for sending in uh, this super chat. James Young says, odds of Mickey and AEW. I talked about this at the start of the stream. If AEW does not utilize Mickey James, oof, that is going to be a huge miss, a really huge miss. And I'm not saying that AEW needs to come in with their white horse and save everybody because they don't, okay? They don't. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you want to invest in yourself and you know, just do better for the company. 
Those people are Mickey James, Samoa Joe, and the Iconics. All right. Let's move on. So, oh, there you go, guys. I already talked about Cesaro versus Jay. Um, I talked about that at the start of this stream. So that is pretty much everything here today in regards to SmackDown. Again, I really, really hope that we start to see some new, refreshing feuds, um, pretty much in all directions, both Raw and SmackDown. Um, that really would be the best thing right now. But other than that, guys, please make sure to subscribe to F4W Online. If you're listening to the audio version of this, make some time. Head on over to F4W Online on YouTube and make sure to subscribe. Also, I will be back here on Tuesday for NXT coverage. So if you guys haven't tuned in to my NXT show, make sure to come on in. It's a new show. So I hope that we get some eyeballs going there so that, um, you know, I can just keep doing more shows on here. So Tuesdays, I have NXT. Wednesdays, I will be on here immediately following AEW Dynamite. I will be talking about AEW, so make sure to come on here on Wednesday. And then once again, I will be back on Friday for SmackDown. Fridays is our chill day, guys. Friday, we chill, all right? So make sure you come in on Fridays as well. Again, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, I will be here on YouTube. We have one last uh, AEW, AEW. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, we have one last super chat. This one is from Mad Marcus. Says another good show by you, Denise. WWE meh. Um, thank you so much to Mad Mark for closing us off with our last super chat of the evening. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that you guys enjoy these live streams. Uh, they're a lot of fun for me. Uh, you guys make these streams much more fun. So thank you so much to everyone who joins. Please do not forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a nice comment, and follow me on Twitter and or on Instagram at underscore Denise Salcedo. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone. Take